Hey there YouTube, welcome back to the FOB. Dr. Yash here. I mean, I'm up here, but you know, this is gonna be a real handsy video. One of those uh, talk with your hands, like one of those kind of videos. So, I wanna introduce to you a new, new section of this project. It's outside the bus. I mean, it's gonna be right here, but it's outside of the conversion process it's more the technical side of what's going on with this bus. It has to do with the heat, the electricity generation. I mean, you can hear the heater, it's going to have its own video. The electricity generation, because I'm also uh, building a diesel generator, it's going to have its own video. Um, and of course, the bus itself is diesel. So, And I already have been heating my shop uh, that I run small engine business out of with a forced air liquid fuel heater. They call them torpedo heaters. You can run them on kerosene, diesel, JP8, um, you can run them on jet fuel, whatever you want. Um, as far as those fuels goes, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Those kind of heaters, I've had one of those in the shop for a while. Well, diesel is a little high. I don't know if you checked last time went to the pump but it's uh, close to six bucks a gallon so I've been uh, interested in alternative fuels for probably a pretty good 12 years or so um, and actually took classes for it when I was in in school for automotive technology so I actually really enjoyed that class the alternative fuels side of it it was actually alternative fuels and hybrid vehicles I learned to dislike hybrids even more than I already did, but um, that's not what this video is about. I just figured I'd throw that out there. <laughs> Alternative fuels, that side of the class was great. I thought it was really fun. The chemical makeup, the combustion byproducts, all that stuff. So, um, there's been a lot of discussions over the years about that and just really have never had a platform to try this stuff out on until now. Now I've got, seems like everything I can get my hands on is diesel so I'm really excited about that because there's a lot of alternative diesel fuels so the reason why I'm talking so much about alternative diesel fuels is because I've chosen a fuel blend that's going to be based off of waste motor oil I produce a lot of waste motor oil through the business um, and through other business owners I, own. I know that have shops as well there's I mean, there's an endless supply of waste motor oil for, you know, for me to use. Like, they're glad that I'm taking it. It's a waste byproduct that's part of doing this type of business um, that a lot of shops are paying to have removed from the premises. Some of the, a little bit, I would call it more adventurous, but not necessarily in any sort of, um, Someone may take that as a negative statement, uh, adventurous in a good way, where they're looking to take that waste byproduct that they pay to get rid of and use it in a way that profits them or saves them money. Some shops are using a waste oil fired heater in the wintertime. I think it's a fantastic idea. I've been interested in the idea for a long time. So now here we are, I'm finally finding ways to use waste motor oil as a fuel. You could do that in a diesel, not a gas engine. So the first step in producing what is referred to as black diesel is filtration. So that brings us to the subject matter of this video. A filter. These people right here are not a sponsor. I paid for this. I bought this thing. I figured I would plug for them, though, because they seem to be one of the more prominent suppliers for this type of thing. Um, I got this off eBay through their eBay store. I don't. I do have to question a couple things. One being why they paint it white when it's some device that handles oil. It's going to be like nasty almost immediately. I haven't even used it yet, but just the oil that it ships with getting in my fingers and then getting smeared on here leaves black streaks. So, of course, that has nothing to do with the functionality. I was just like kind of laughing at it. It was like it's nice and white until I touched it. Now it's gray. So, but what this is, this is a centrifuge. 
this company right here. Oh, I should also mention PA Biodiesel Supply. I'm going to cover up their website for just a second. You would think that's Pennsylvania Biodiesel Supply, or I would think so. But you Google PA Biodiesel Supply, and there is a place in Pennsylvania that's named this. But when you go to their website, PABiodieselSupply.com, again, I'm, I'm, they're not a sponsor. They're not paying me to say this. I just figured I'd throw that out there. This is not a biased. The only bias is that I bought their product. Um, so I'm, it's in front of me, so I'm talking about it. This is not the same company that's in Pennsylvania. I noticed right off the bat this was shipping from Texas. Interestingly enough, it's from, well, we'll get into that. So I was thinking Texas then, huh? Well, okay. Um, that must be Port Arthur Biodiesel Supply then. This It gets worse. It's not Port Arthur or Pennsylvania. I don't know what it is. I mean, maybe it was in Port Arthur, but now it's in a town called Pittsburgh, Texas. So it's not Pennsylvania, but it came from Pittsburgh. Like, man, I, this must be some kind of joke, and I'm just totally ruining it. Uh, they're probably like, dude, shut up. Like, you're ruining our joke. But yeah, it's it's. I thought that was hilarious. I was like, you really can't make that up. But um, so it's a centrifuge. This little thing right here can flow has the potential of flowing um, 55 gallons per hour so it can do one pass on a 55 gallon drum worth of oil in an hour that's a decent amount of flow for my purposes that's probably more than enough but it also as much as it flows it filters it's a centrifuge inside here so it filters submicron um, I've seen ratings anywhere between 0.1 and 0.5 micron which is extremely fine. I mean, we're talking microscopic levels here, and by comparison, uh, Caterpillar is known for having very high efficiency, low micron filters, and the fuel filter in this bus is two microns. So, factory cat design spec says two microns. This does, you know, if it's half a micron, that's 75% that's smaller. That, that's that's very fine. So that is heavy metals, that's carbon deposits, so, and it's everything above that too. So it can filter down to that size. Um, but really anything that's heavier than the oil itself, which includes carbon, heavy metals, dirt, uh, I mean any kind of sludge particles, any sort of uh, heavy minerals that are not actually part of the homogeneous mixture of the oil itself, uh, all that stuff gets filtered out. Um, it also can filter out a small amount of water and ethylene glycol, uh, so your coolants, if you have coolant contamination in the oil you're getting, which hopefully you don't, because uh, that really shouldn't even cross your table, because that's garbage, but it can filter all that stuff out, So, and it has the ability of holding 10 ounces of trash in here, which is quite a bit. Like 10 ounces, that's more than half a pound. Um, so it's a really cool little device. You see, it just looks like a can. It's got this rotor that spins in here, and it's fully mechanical. It operates off of pressure being fed to the inlet port here, and it has a little um, pressure shut off, so it won't engage until about 22, 24 PSI, and then it runs up to about, they say the maximum is 95 PSI. So at that point, you they say it spins up to about 8,000 RPM. So you ask yourself, well, how's the oil pressure going to come in here and make it spin? Well, that's the cool part. You see this thing's got these little bushings, so it spins very freely on the shaft here. Flip it upside down, we got these little jets, these little oil jets on the bottom. So what happens is the oil comes in right here. It hits the pressure relief. It's above the rated uh, relief pressure or the, um, yeah, I guess it would be a relief. It kind of works like one. So when you're above the set pressure, and then the oil starts climbing this post right here. There's two holes there. Of course, between these two bushings, there's space, which I'll show you in a second. 
So the oil just starts filling up this cavity, and once this cavity inside this can is pressurized, well, then it starts spraying out here, and it spins. It's pretty simple. It gets slightly more complicated once we get inside here. We'll go ahead and take the nut off the top here. So when it's spinning, it provides a lot of G-forces. You know, just think about that ride at the carnival where you're inside of it and you're on the wall and it's got the sliding thing and you slide, you know, it push, pushes you against the wall and you slide up the wall. That's pretty much what your oil's doing in here, except you're the dirt. You're the dirt that's against the wall. So, um, you can see this, this is actually where the trash gets collected. It's, it's just flung up against the outside here and cakes up on the wall. Uh, but it also, I noticed this when I first took it apart, I was like, well, how does it, can it capture any liquids? It appears that it can. Because if you get anything that's going to come out, it's going to fling out here through these holes. It's going to hit the wall. It's going to run down because it's flowing downwards to get out. But it also has to come back up. So any liquids that are heavier are going to end up settling towards the bottom until you get up to this point right here. So in theory, it should actually be able to catch liquids. Um, which is great. I mean, I, I am going to settle out the liquids. But you know, there's going to be something that gets missed. It's inevitable. Um, so there's probably going to be some additives for water and the fuel and stuff like that involved or used in emergency cases. But um, that's all part of the process. It's part of the learning here. But you see, you take this off. You see the oil just goes down in here, sprays into these little jets, spins away. And then once it gets back in this housing, which you see here, it comes out and it sprays out into here sprays down into here and comes out the drain so really cool really cool piece of equipment here I, I'm you know I, I think uh, you know it's a it seems to be a, a good quality I mean it's a nice it's a nice piece everything's got a serial number on it it's actually a balanced assembly because it can spin up to 8,000 rpms you can see match marks there's notches here there's an arrow here so that this counterweight is in the right spot so, this isn't a new idea. These filters actually are, nor they're not an uncommon device, but they're normally used as bypass oil filtration on diesel engines, or it could be any engine really, that has a pressure loop system with enough pressure and volume to work. Uh, but it's, um, there's, there's certain companies that sell them as an aftermarket item. And even um, manufacturers like uh, Scania, uh, I've seen videos of some of their trucks actually have a filter very similar to this from the factory. Uh, it sits right next to their oil filter. And you'll see a guy that, you know, the video I watched was a guy taking it apart just like you've seen here. And he takes that inner rotor cover off and he just scrapes the junk off of it and cleans it all out and puts it back together. And that's how you remove the, uh, the submicron particles out of the, uh, out of the filter housing after you're done using it. So, but yeah, so it's literally that simple. You just, it's oil in, it does the rest of the work, and then, you know, I'll have to play around with it and figure out like when, what time frame or how many gallons is gonna produce enough dirt to fill that thing up or, is it actually a pretty lengthy period of time? I don't know, we'll have to see. But you can see it has this flange on the bottom. What I'm gonna be doing with it is, they actually even sent a gasket with it. They sent this gasket. They also sent, uh, uh, I'll get into what this is in a second. This is part of the regulation of the pressure going in and the flow control. Um, but what this is, I'm basically gonna make a flange that looks like this. It's gonna be bolted to the bottom and it's going to have a pipe that has the same threads as the plugs on the top of a 55 gallon drum. So, and it'll sit up high enough to where all this can clear. And you're just going to thread it into one of the one of the holes on the uh, one of the plugs on the 55 gallon drum. So you'll have a pump pulling the oil up out of the drum, forcing it through here. You'll have another bypass line here, which will go back to uh, one of the other holes. But um, or I might even make it plumb into the to the base of this, so it's all in one hole. But um, and it'll just drain right back in there. So it, I may actually use one of these on the bus engine. 
because it uses uh, the motor oil, the engine oil, as a hydraulic fluid to operate the injectors. It has a uh, an expensive high pressure oil pump, you know, a couple thousand bucks type thing if it fails, and the injectors themselves also operate on that hydraulic uh, oil. The engine oil is ramped up from, you know, we'll say nominally like 50, 60 psi up to upwards of 4,000 psi, and it makes it very important to keep clean good quality motor oil in these engines. That's actually their Achilles heel if they've got one, is that Huey injection system. Uh, the Power Stroke 7.3 and the 6.0 for that matter have an injection system like that. And everyone knows that they can be very reliable, but they also can suffer from bad oil. So something like this that takes the submicron particles out of the engine oil would be a very good investment. Um, to keep that oil clean and keep those pumps and injectors happy. So I may actually be investing in one of these also for that purpose as a bypass oil filter. It's cheap insurance. This was like 300 bucks for the kit. So um, again, I think for 300 bucks, this is a this is a really nice product. Um, and they're not the only, PA Biodiesel isn't the only company selling stuff like this, but they're one of the easiest ones to get a hold of. So they sent me this assembly as well. This is a 0 to 200 PSI gauge, which, you know, like I said, you're looking at a range of, you know, 22 up to 95. They said do not run it past 95. Um, so if I was going to hook, if I had, you know, oil about to be fed in here, what I would do is actually have the, I would actually leave this valve open, have it bypassing all to the drum, and then slowly increase this until I get my pressure in range and set that up to where I want it to be. So that's all that is, is just a manual bypass pressure regulator. Uh, simple and effective. I like it. So that came with it, but that's, that's pretty much it. That's the oil filter for working on some alternative fuels for all these different things that I've got at my disposal now that operate on diesel fuel. So everything is going to get a taste of waste motor oil here before before too much longer. So like I said, there are uh, the heater and the generator. Those are going to get their own separate videos um, because they all have different, you know, there's going to be like a review on the heater for one and the, uh, the diesel engine. Um, I'll be showing some things that I'm going to be doing with that. So Hopefully this video was, uh, hopefully it was entertaining to you, uh, or educational, or both. But um, anyway, I yeah, I, get, I just got this in today, and I'm I'm pretty excited about it. So if you've seen on any social media platforms where I've had foreshadowing and showed anything to do with energy density of different fuels and stuff like that, this is. Now you know what I'm talking about. It was a little bit of foreshadowing leading up to this video and what's to come. Um, the heater's ramping up over here. It's getting a little chilly. So the um, so that's pretty much it. Um, also, another really good thing. There's a lot of ways to do fine filtration of oils, but they require paper filter medias spin on filter stuff like that I didn't really want to go with that style of filtration because I would have to continue buying a product over and over again as it got depleted this doesn't work that way the only the only part in here I forgot to show you this the only part in here that's really uh, would be a maintenance item uh, there's two things actually the o-rings you got this one big o-ring here this will probably deteriorate with age and then the o-ring that's actually around this housing here will probably deteriorate with age uh, just because of the exposure to whatever's in the oil um, it's gonna happen it's pretty much inevitable but the other thing is these bronze like oil like bronze uh, sleeve bushings here they look to be a flanged sleeve bushing probably a standard size I don't know if it's metric or standard but I'm almost positive that that's going to be a hardware store item so the wear item on these is going to be these bushings 
So those are easy though. You just get a punch and drive those out. That's not a big deal at all. I mean, you could even do it easier than that. I've actually um, made a little driver. You can actually thread these and use a bolt to draw them out of the housing. So I've done that on uh, rebuilding distributors before. So you can do that here. Uh, it looks like you got enough surface around it to do that. So eventually those bushings will probably need to be replaced. Um, but honestly, for their, their pressure fed with so much oil, it'll probably be a long time. You'd have to have some really gritty oil before those really started to take a hit. Um, the bushings, their nature is to actually allow stuff to be embedded in them. So you really shouldn't have any problems with that for a really long time. And you'll definitely have gotten your money's worth by that point. So again, not a sponsor, really not a sponsor at all. I have no association with them except for I gave them money, but I like uh, what they're producing here. So, you know, it was more about the filter than the brand, but the brand's there. So if you wanted to check them out, that'd be cool. You know, it's neat to see companies putting stuff out like this. So anyways, hopefully you found this video uh, helpful, entertaining, educational, what have you. So, but I think that's pretty much going to cover it. So uh, I'll see you next time. You know, like, comment, subscribe. You know the deal. See you later.